Okay, I'm going to give a little review and idea of my visit to the Malacore Thai Cafe in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, I've been to Thailand and I've eaten there too, so I have a little bit of experience with Thai food. Um, now, first off, I set a reservation just to be safe, and I questioned the uh, gentleman I spoke to on the phone as to dishes that I specifically wanted to try when I got there, being which the Thai boat noodle pork blood soup made with pork and pig's blood. And uh, so I, he told me on the phone that, yeah, we have it. We call it Vietnamese soup. So uh, so I set my reservation to go in and try it, and I went in. Um, when I got there, uh, I noticed I didn't probably really need a reservation. There wasn't that many people there, but uh, that's not a problem. But I went in and I was seated where I was approached by the waiter and, you know, given the... Uh, you know, what all I told him, I'm the one who called with the reservation for the uh, pork blood noodle soup, the uh, boat noodle is what the Thais usually call it, and uh, made with pig's blood. And uh, then he informed me, and I recognized his voice from the man on the phone. And the server informed me that we don't have uh, pork blood soup, we have beef blood soup, we don't serve pork or pig, pig's blood. So. It kind of felt like a bait and switch to me. I wasn't really happy about that. Um, if you tell me something on the phone and then I come in and you tell me you have something different, he's like, oh, it's just as good. I'm like, oh, that's not what I asked for. So uh, I did try the, the beef blood soup and uh, it was okay, it was good. Uh, very similar to the Thais, the way they make it with the Chinese five spice and everything. But uh, it really wasn't, you know, what I'm used to from Thailand now, in Bangkok specifically. Um, and for one, they usually put morning glory in the soup, which there wasn't in this one. So, I mean, that's fine. Everybody makes it a little different regionally. I know one of the chefs is from the Northeast. The other one's from just outside of Bangkok. So I was, you know, hoping to get the one just outside of Bangkok that could make it more like a Bangkok style, but that's fine. You know, it was still good soup. I'm not saying it was bad, um, but it wasn't pig's blood. It wasn't what I'm used to and uh, the bait and switch feeling really kind of set the mood for me after that with this particular waiter. And uh, I had noticed that he was, I knew he was the one I talked to on the phone from his voice. Uh, there was a young lady waitress, she was very, very nice. Um, I did get a sense from the gentleman waiver, waiter, he has a bit of an attitude uh, when I was in there. I didn't, you know, I could kind of see it. And I had read reviews from other people on the web before I went in. And they had mentioned this waiter in particular, how um, how rude he could be and how uh, defensive he is. And uh, I kind of noticed that with him. I could sense it right away that that was the problem with him. So uh, if I own the restaurant, I probably would try. He's probably family, and that's why he works there. But um, I would I put him in the back and not out and dealing with the customers. Uh, I don't feel he has the personality for waiting. Um, and the bait and switch thing, like I said, really bothered me. Uh, other than that, we tried the crispy duck, which was supposed to be their signature dish. It was good. Um, I've had better in Thailand uh, duck, crispy duck dishes, um, but it was good. Um, I wouldn't knock it at all. It was definitely a very good dish. Uh, it seemed like it had some other influences in it, um, almost Hawaiian influences to it. Uh, so, um, other than that, we had a few appetizers, chicken wings, pretty standard, you know. Uh, I wasn't writing home about them, but they weren't bad, they were good. Um, we also had the summer roll, which was good. Uh, the peanut sauce was really good there. Uh, they did a good Thai traditional peanut sauce. And um, the Thai teas, uh, although pricey, um, you know, were good, they're Thai tea. But, um, my biggest thing uh, I would have to say with this too is the price. I felt the price was a bit steep. Um, I had two appetizers and two meal and the two main meals dishes, and it was about eighty dollars. And that's kind of pricey for the food quality I was getting. The blood soup was probably the best thing that I ate there that day. Um, but again, like I said, the pricing was 
was pretty dynamic, <laughs> substantial. Um, I used to, well, I know a different economy altogether, but in Bangkok, that same bowl of soup used to call me, cost me one dollar. Um, and it had more ingredients to it, like the, uh, like it had the, um, the morning glory vine in it. But uh, I know here a different economy, but I can get that same bowl of soup at some of the other area restaurants for eight to ten dollars. You know, roughly here it was a lot more expensive. Um, and everything, like I said, this whole meal I felt should have been closer to forty-five dollars, maybe. Uh, 80 felt really steep for what I was getting. I didn't feel that it, the, it was that great, you know, for an $80 plate or meal for two. Um, that's about 40 bucks a person. That's yeah, a little little high. Uh, the painting and artwork around the place was pretty nice. I liked, uh, liked that. The outside had a little area, which is kind of nice. Tiki bar look, kind of similar to something you'd see in Thailand. A little cleaner than it would have been in Thailand, but yeah, that's kind of the ambiance of Thailand. Um, but uh, again, I couldn't get over the price. Uh, so what I've noticed with the website of theirs is they have a um, three business partner arrangement. You have the two Thai chefs, one she's just from outside of Bangkok and one from uh, the Northeast. Then you have a uh, an artist, which is, I don't know if they brought him in as a financial backer or how exactly all that worked out. Um, my recommendation to them would be to buy him out um, that way you can lower your prices because uh, when you try to split it three ways, the income from a small establishment like that, which it is a very small place, um, even if your lunch rush was, your dinner rush or whatever was huge, you can't fit that many people so you can't make that much money there. Um, so my idea would be to get out one of the partners, not that they're a bad thing, but Honestly, he's an artist, which is great. He did some wonderful painting there and everything. I don't knock him for any of that or being in business with him. But what I do say is three partners, the two that have the experience in the industry and are the chefs themselves, probably have more business being partners in this. And I, even if a financial backer, they need to buy him out. Um, and like I said, put a, lower the prices a little bit. Uh, it's a bit high and trying to feed three mouths and three families really from that is kind of pricey. Um, so that's pretty much my advice to them. Other than that, it was good food. It wasn't bad. It wasn't the best I've had. It wasn't the worst. Um, I would feel that it would be 40, maybe $50 for, yeah, about $50 for two people to go eat there. 80 was too much. So you're about 30, $30 too high. And the way, you know, restaurant industry, from what I've understood, works is it's in thirds. Uh, one third goes to the food and the, uh, you know, the food. And one third goes to the overhead for the staff and the building and everything like that. And then one third is supposed to be profit. And that's how it's supposed to be divided up. But uh, with one third of that business going into three hands, it, that's why their prices are high. They have to to be able to make a livable wage for each other from that place. So uh, again, I recommend that they split the partnership into at least, if they can get down the one owner would be great, two owners, not more than that, um, and uh, bring down the price of their food a bit. Uh, bring your, whoever he is, whether he's family or not, uh, bring him into the back. Um, don't need him serving. The young lady that was there was great. She's a really good waitress as far as I'm concerned. She came out, was on time with everything. She was very pleasant, um, had a good attitude and disposition for the job. Um, and you know, you could always put another one in there too. And uh, the fact that she spoke Thai too is really good. I've seen too many Thai restaurants in Florida with Chinese or Vietnamese or somebody else running them and waiting them. And you know, it's really better to have the, the people that are you know, of that country run and uh, uh, serving and uh, cooking for it. So that's that's a good thing. You do have Thai chefs in the kitchen, which is really good as well. Okay, so that's uh, Wayne's review of uh, this restaurant, and uh, I hope you guys try it out. Um, like I said, hope uh, maybe I get through to them a little bit on their partnership and, and everything, but uh, hey, that's my opinion. You don't have to take it. Thank you.
All right, this is the outside of the building. Uh, some nice seating out here. Kind of nice in the evening. That's cool, like it is starting to cool down right now. Real Thai beer. Nice little gardeny environment. Looks like the chef's actually making some spices out here, which is beautiful. They can pick their own spice right outside. And comes back here. Uh, some fresh peppers right here. And it looks like a nice tiki bar area. Kind of does give you a more of a Thai feeling back here. Very, very nice. So, it's got a very inviting space out here. I showed you a little bit of the inside, but I didn't want to film too much. This there's actually customers in there. Some orchids on the trees, and. Uh, Again, more spices down here that the chef can use. Right there. There's a papaya growing on the tree. And this is the place. So it is a uh, open air Thai cafe. Little flowers and plenty of spices. As the chef is growing some spices outside so he can put it in the food. Nice papayas. Wonder if everybody's gonna pick them or if they're gonna last. <laughs> oh, another good basil. Peppers, not bad and some aloe. So this is the place. It's on 25th Street in West Palm, just south of 45th Street. And uh, Flagler is just a couple blocks that way. And here we go.